Coca-Cola and PepsiCo are two of the most recognizable names in the soft drink industry. These companies have been in a century-long commercial battle that has seen them engage in numerous marketing campaigns and product innovations to gain the upper hand in the market. The rivalry between these two beverage giants has been one of the most fascinating commercial battles of the 20th century, and it continues to this day. Today, we will delve deeper into the Coca-Cola versus Pepsi rivalry. Coca-Cola, often simply referred to as Coke, was invented in 1886 by John Pemberton, a pharmacist from Atlanta, Georgia. The drink was initially marketed as a patent medicine, intended to relieve headaches and calm nervousness. However, it soon became apparent that Coca-Cola's unique taste had broader appeal, and by 1891, it was being sold in every state in America. The Coca-Cola Company was officially incorporated in 1892, and by the early 1900s, Coke had become one of America's most popular soft drinks. By 1910, there were more than 370 bottling locations across America. After World War I, on September 5, 1919, under the operation of a group of capitalists, Coca-Cola went public. PepsiCo, on the other hand, was founded in 1898 by Caleb Bradham, a pharmacist from North Carolina. Bradham's drink, originally called Brad's Drink, was renamed PepsiCola in 1898 and quickly became a popular alternative to Coca-Cola. In 1923, the founder of PepsiCola, Caleb Bradham, faced a financial disaster when the sugar futures market crashed, sending his beloved beverage company into bankruptcy. After filing for bankruptcy protection, Pepsi-Cola struggled to survive, changing hands multiple times over the next eight years. But little did anyone know that this would be the beginning of a fascinating and enduring commercial battle that would last over a century. In 1931, Pepsi-Cola faced bankruptcy once again, but this time, it found the savior in a man named Charles Guth. Guth was no ordinary businessman. He was the owner of the largest candy store chain in the United States, Loft, which sold a staggering 4 million bottles of Coca-Cola every year. But when Guth had a disagreement with Coca-Cola during their business negotiations, he decided to take matters into his own hands. In a fit of rage, Guth declared that he would buy Pepsi-Cola and switch all of the Coca-Cola in his chain stores to Pepsi-Cola instead. Little did he know that this one impulsive decision would trigger a century-long commercial battle between two of the biggest names in the soft drink industry. The 1930s was a time of economic hardship for many Americans. The Great Depression had hit the country hard, and people were struggling to make ends meet. Pepsi-Cola was on the brink of bankruptcy, and its new owner, Charles Guth, was desperate to turn things around. He knew that he had to do something drastic to make Pepsi-Cola stand out from its main competitor, Coca-Cola. That's when he came up with a bold strategy that would ultimately catapult Pepsi-Cola to fame, a price war. Coca-Cola had set the price of its soda at 5 cents per bottle, and all its competitors followed suit. Guth decided to slash the price of Pepsi-Cola in half, promising to offer double the amount of soda for the same price. The slogan twice as much for a nickel was born accompanied by a catchy tune, Nickel Nickel Nickel, that would become synonymous with the brand. The campaign was a hit. People were captivated by the catchy tune and the idea of getting more for less. Soon, Pepsi-Cola had opened hundreds of new stores in the United States and around the world. Within a few short years, the struggling unknown had become the second largest soda company in America, raking in millions of dollars in net profit annually. However, at that time, Pepsi and Coca-Cola were still incomparable. Coca-Cola had about 40% of the market share, while Pepsi only had 10%. World War II brought significant challenges to American businesses, especially those in the beverage industry. With sugar prices soaring and consumption restricted by the government, companies were struggling to survive. But Robert Woodruff, the chairman of Coca-Cola, saw an opportunity to turn the tide and cement his company's place in history. Woodruff understood the power of branding, and he knew that by tying Coca-Cola to patriotism, he could create an unbreakable bond between the drink and the American people. So, he struck a deal with the military to provide Coca-Cola to American troops, no matter where they were in the world or the cost to the company. 
Under the directive from Eisenhower, Coca-Cola began building factories at an unprecedented rate, producing millions of bottles every day. The drink became a symbol of home and a reminder of the American values soldiers were fighting to defend. And as soldiers returned home from the war, they brought their love of Coca-Cola with them, creating a generation of lifelong fans. Meanwhile, Pepsi-Cola struggled to compete with Coca-Cola's wartime success, hampered by the sugar restriction law. While Coca-Cola's profits soared to new heights, Pepsi-Cola lagged far behind, with a meager $26 million in profit compared to Coca-Cola's $1.26 billion. After World War II, Pepsi-Cola found its second wind in the age-old battle against Coca-Cola. But they knew they couldn't compete with Coke's classic family-friendly brand image, so they took a different approach and set their sights on the younger generations. Pepsi launched an enormous advertising campaign aimed at the youth market with slogans like Drink Pepsi, for those who think young, and Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, that specifically targeted the younger demographic. In the 1950s, television began to take over the U.S. media scene, and Pepsi jumped on the opportunity to hire some of the biggest stars of the time to endorse their product. If you look at it today, everyone from Michael Jackson to Britney Spears was on board, and even the chairman of Pepsi-Cola at the time married a Hollywood movie star who was seen drinking Pepsi in every appearance. The effect was jaw-dropping. But Pepsi's marketing strategy didn't stop there. They also revamped their product packaging to appeal to younger people, introducing a spiral-shaped, cool-looking bottle with a blue logo that represented youthfulness and vitality. And they even made the taste a little sweeter to cater to the preferences of younger people. All of these strategies helped Pepsi create the Pepsi generation. The brand became synonymous with youth, rebellion, and free-spiritedness, in stark contrast to Coca-Cola's classic and traditional image. Pepsi represented freedom, and Coca-Cola represented the family. This created a label effect where people could tell what kind of person you were based on the color of the bottle you were holding. If you were drinking Coca-Cola, you were seen as more traditional, while Pepsi drinkers were considered more rebellious and free-spirited. Pepsi's marketing strategy was incredibly effective because it recognized the baby boomer population explosion that happened after the war. Rock and roll culture was also on the rise, and everyone was seeking a sense of freedom and rebellion. Pepsi's strategy catered to these preferences, and the company's sales skyrocketed. By the 1970s, Pepsi had successfully caught up to Coca-Cola's market share with Pepsi holding 19.8% and Coca-Cola holding 29.7%. After years of price wars, differentiation, and celebrity endorsements, Pepsi had finally established itself as a strong competitor in the age-old commercial battle. Throughout their long-standing commercial battle, both Coca-Cola and PepsiCo have employed a wide range of marketing strategies to gain the upper hand in the market. Perhaps the most famous of these marketing campaigns was the Cola Wars of the 1970s and 1980s, during which both companies released a series of TV commercials attacking each other's brands. These commercials often featured celebrities and used catchy slogans to highlight the supposed superiority of one brand over the other. The most popular of these slogans was Coca-Cola's It's the Real Thing, which was launched in 1969 and is still used today. In the 1980s, PepsiCo launched the Pepsi Challenge, a marketing campaign that offered consumers a blind taste test between Pepsi and Coca-Cola. The campaign was a huge success and helped Pepsi gain a significant share of the market. This campaign was later updated in the early 2000s with the Pepsi Next Challenge, which aimed to promote the company's sugar-free drink. Coca-Cola responded to Pepsi's Pepsi Challenge campaign with its own new Coke campaign in 1985. The company changed its formula, creating a sweeter, smoother drink that it believed would appeal to younger consumers. However, this move was met with significant backlash from loyal Coca-Cola drinkers, and the company eventually reverted to its original formula under the name Coca-Cola Classic. It's hard to believe, but after three months of trying out a new formula, Coca-Cola hit the brakes and returned to its old recipe. And guess what? People went wild over it. Same recipe, same taste, same happiness. But the sales went through the roof. It's funny how consumers work. Maybe they just needed to lose it to appreciate it. 
And just like that, Coca-Cola regained its throne as the one and only Coke that brings a smile to your face. In recent years, both Coca-Cola and PepsiCo have shifted their marketing strategies to focus more on social media and digital advertising. Both companies have created a strong presence on platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, using these channels to engage with consumers and promote their products. In the battlefield of cola, Coca-Cola has triumphed over Pepsi, but Pepsi had a different idea. Instead of taking on Coca-Cola directly, it decided to encircle the city from the countryside and diversify into other business areas. As early as 1965, Pepsi merged with Frito-Lay to form PepsiCo and began expanding into other commercial areas. At one point, PepsiCo even held fast food chains like KFC and Pizza Hut. Today, many well-known snack brands are actually owned by PepsiCo. In 2020, snacks accounted for 55% of its total revenue a true blossoming of diversified development. In terms of annual revenue, Coca-Cola earned $25 billion in 2022, while PepsiCo exceeded $45 billion, almost twice as much as Coca-Cola. However, when it comes to brand value, Coca-Cola reigns supreme and has been one of the most valuable brands in the world for more than 20 years. As 2022, Coca-Cola had a market value of $259 billion, while PepsiCo had a value of $238 billion, making them evenly matched. After half a century of fierce competition, Coca-Cola has become the Everest of the cola industry, while PepsiCo has grown into a vast grassland in the snack industry. The century-long battle between these two companies is still ongoing, and who will come out on top remains to be seen.